quick summary for me, please, from last week. Group got jumped, and group did the jump. That was too quick. Uh, original group got jumped. Uh, new group did the jumping. We went and jumped on over to the uh, central place after... Uh, I forget the name. Ruark. How do you say that? Ruark. Ruark. After Ruark saw, saw a big fire plume, uh, we yoinked some goodies after original group recognized the dude that was there. Uh, we hop on over to boats, go on downstream or upstream, whatever swamp stream is. Uh, go to tavern. Tavern gets up and starts walking off. We on journey. Nice. Okay. So, yeah, you guys are currently in the inn at the end of the road. Um, the lovely little old druid lady, Sue, has welcomed you in. And she's fed you and and kept you comfortable whilst you're in the end. Is there anything that you guys would like to do? As Palm kind of just wakes up, stretches a little bit, look looks out the window, it's like, immediately runs downstairs, is like, where are we? Did somebody kidnap the house? <laughs> uh, Sue looks up, and she was she was busy doing some paperwork, and she looks up, sees you a little bit frantic, and she says, "Oh, oh no, uh, dearie, uh, we're we're completely okay. The the inn just likes to go for walks." It. Oh, I. Yeah, sounds about right. You do food, right? Oh yes. Um And she says, um she stands up and uh kinda spins around as if looking for something. Um Can I help and... you with anything? Oh oh no dearie, it's okay. Uh I'll find it eventually, it always turns up again. Um food, yes. She Does the food also go for a walk? No. Because if so, it probably <laughs> needs to be dealt with first. <laughs> no. <laughs> she she toddles off into uh, the dining room, through which is the kitchen, and you start hearing her make um make some clanging sounds with pots and pans and stuff. Wow. What's everyone else doing? Uh, the inn made a roost for us birds, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it made like a loft kind of thing. I had a book of magic that I... Uh, you, you did? Yes. I can't remember. <laughs> you read the book of magic. Nothing spectacular uh, happens. Interesting. Uh, Mewch is just gonna be up in the... Root. Is it like... Is it morning, night, day? What what um, what am I looking at here? You got to the end. Um, kind of... In the middle of the afternoon. So... Mm. Uh... At this point, it's starting to get dark outside. Does does the Fey Wilds have normal day night cycles? I genuinely don't know. Whatever the DM says goes. Exactly. It's yeah. the Feywild. This is what I'm asking. <laughs> it's the Feywild. It's timey wimey wibbly wobbly. 
Yeah. yeah that's what I'm asking. Uh, like, we'll does looking out. at the sky actually matter? Let... Or is it just kind of, oh, it's night now. Yeah. It's going to be night like two be... months, but it's night now. There better be stars or else my passive ain't going to be affected and I'm going to cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, we we just nice. need to know how wibbly the wobbly is. Um, exactly. It's kind of loosely based on... Uh, loosely based on the material planes cycle. So it'll be kind of normal ish, but there are there will be like moments where it kind of feels like no time has passed at all type thing. Fair enough. You know, like like those times when you have a day and it's a day, it feels like a week. So, Rook, had a good rest outside of the chains? Yes. Very much so. And Rook is probably just like, I don't want to say pruning, I can't think of the right word for it, but basically just sorting through his feathers, cleaning himself up. Sorting himself out. As birds do. Birds. <laughs> He's much more chill now. It's good to see you again. It's been a while. What about you, Muja? Uh Muja looks up uh from he, he I would say that he was once again like tuning his uh eh, his veal. Uh and sort of didn't realize that he was going to be engaged at this point and just sort of nods happily. Yeah, I guess we haven't really had much of a chance for our characters to communicate, considering we've been sort of locked up. <laughs> mm -hmm. And not much communication ever from me. <laughs> exactly. And we got some new people. Uh, you were uh, Vildrasen, I believe? That's correct. And... Kiranos? Kiranois? Kiranios. Kiranios. You said you two kind of just wandered your way into the Feywilds, huh? Uh... In a manner of speaking. We didn't set out intending to end up here, but... Here we are nonetheless. Fair enough. Do you guys know where we're going now? It seemed like you had an idea. Well, gonna go kick some guy's ass, on. right? Checking my notes and I can't... Well, no, we, we have a first step. To, yeah, you we're... guys were heading back to Talami Hill to deliver the key that you found to Jingle Jangle. That's the place. Returning some of the thing, something that we found in the pile of loot. And those rabbits. Oh yeah, there's some good stuff in there. I would pull out like my little unicorn cookie cu cookie cutter and start like playing with it across the table. And we should get something of an idea of where we should go after that. Indeed. Well then. Lead the way. You guys uh, seem to know a bit more about this warlock patrons, so I'm gonna have to hope that you can lead me to them at some point. If we're just looking out, would we recognize the path um, that we're on now, or like was it the one that we were on before it, when we were coming towards the tollway? You know, roll a. Um. <laughs> Rolly check for me. I'm not sure what type of check. Perception. History. But, uh, yeah, go with history for perception. Survival. <laughs> okay. Oh wait, no, survival first. Go with survival. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Roll all three. Roll all of them. <laughs> um, three things. Oh, I've got no idea. 
No. I've got no idea. Did, did anyone want to assess? <laughs> that was a four. The, the path is indeed a path. The path is a path. Uh, is a path. We're yeah, in the yes, sure, damn though. swamp in this awful area of the Feywild. How? I mean, look, the end uh, should be taking us Madam close Dean, to where we want to go. Uh, how familiar would Miuja probably be with the Feywild at this point? Uh, like, would he ha would would I have a <laughs> good sense of like traveling wise? Not like I don't mean inherently. Does he know everything? Sort of thing. I was gonna cry if you made me follow up your backstory. Um, <laughs> you would know not much, I would say. Okay. Um, you definitely wouldn't be able to tell where you currently are. I was just asking because one of my passives has a bit of a map light uh, effect. As long as I can see the stars, I have a good idea of my orientation. Mm -hmm. uh, consistent at it, the start of the Feywild. Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably not even consistent in the Feywild. It's, or... Yeah, I was going to say, it's a little all over the place in the Feywild. You can't I really cry. Map much in the Feywild. That pandas. You try and follow the stars in the Feywild, they'll just tell you to f off. You would literally just Stop end staring. up in a new place every time. Yep. <laughs> and they point and laugh. With any luck on this uh, return journey, we won't have to go through that one particular swamp that was rather irritating. You guys really don't like swamps around here, huh? whole place is a swamp. Just just a uh, gentle reminder. Mute me. Mute just well. looks out the window. <laughs> oh, I mean a more swampier swamp. One that has irritating effects. Uh, Mute is going to use his minor illusion to make a piece of paper and it just says in big bold letters like what? Well... To get to this inn from where we went, where we happened to find it, we had to go through a particularly unpleasant swamp. Not dangerous, just irritating. A small bit of land surrounded by, well, swamp that bubbles, and when the bubbles pop, they have rather, un rather annoying effects. Were you nice to the swamp? No, not really. Well, there's your problem. You gotta be nice to nature. Miyuja points to <laughs> Pao and, like, listen to her. When these swamps start being nice, maybe we'll do the same. I was perfectly oh. indifferent towards the swamp to begin with. But considering how many bubbles it decided to pop, with me in range of them, I'd lost my temper a bit by the end of the crossing. Man, sounds like fun. I like bubbles. Karanius just sort of looks towards the uh, two winged individuals of the group. I envy you right now. Amuja um, tilts his head and then keeps tilting it until it's like almost entirely upside down. At this point, Sue walks out with uh, six plates of, of food and puts one down in front of each of you. Oh, uh, <sighs> Thank you quick again. Question, because, quick question because I forgot to uh, write it down last time. Uh, what race is Sue? She is a human. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. She's, she's a little old lady. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Looks at the food in front of me. I would like to rage. No, uh, just I'll just start going down. I bardic inspiration. <laughs> well, you know, you got to ragey. We got to get to the swamp. 
you know if you eat the food, you're not going to reduce the carry weight of the inn. It's still going to be there. <laughs> oh, is that how the inn moves? It's just it's like Encanto or something. Uh, no, it's on feet. It is the background image right now. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's I, I, I know. It's... I was gonna say, like, if if you've ever read Discworld, think the yep. luggage, but in yes, the definitely. That was my first thought. Yeah. Yeah. No inspiration there at all. I'm sure, completely coincidental. I always figured it was like the Discworld version of uh, Baba Yaga Hut. Yeah. Had more feet. More. More feet. Never enough. All right, Tarantino, calm down. Who met her? Uh... <laughs> You're just gonna dig into his food. Whatever it might be, I don't think he particularly cares after having to deal with the fucking bandits it, it for is, is as long as he did. Yeah, it is catered to each of you, so you'll get like um because you're both predatory birds you both get like meat as well as uh mm, some seeds yummy. as well and that yeah fiber yeah is this where we get Ab assume. abby to perfectly describe all of our meals please don't I i'm not a monster <laughs> because i i've been forced to do that too many times to ever do that to what someone else is paired with it Sorry. What's the wine? <laughs> what wine is the that? Of the wine that's paired with us? <laughs> no, oh, we are in that era. Feywild. And we are in the Feywilds. Yeah, I was going to say, Feywild yeah. wine, you, you, just, just drink it. <laughs> I mean, you still have that drink. bottle, don't you? I do, but I have, yeah. I have uses for that bottle. In fact, one of my plans from last session involved that bottle in case I needed to be sneaky. I was just going to open it and use it as a distraction. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Please don't after, ask me to my food. I, I'm not. <laughs> it after looks at DM is, harder. After Granios <laughs> finishes eating, he'll just sort of clean up after himself, head into the kitchen and start using Mage Hand to help tidy up again, like the last visit. Mm-hmm. They'll just send you kitchen and help as well. Oh, yeah, I'll use some prestidigitation. Yeah, as before. It's just the car wash Rockwell. with the prestidigitation and the mm -hmm. uh, mage hand yeah. running it through them again. I can thunder up the kitchen if need be. Um, <laughs> I can, I, I, I can thunderbolt the kitchen a couple of times. I feel like not. neither of those things is not. I mean, not. Um, this little old lady is showing you some hospitality, and your first thought to help clean up is, "Oh, let me just electrocute the entire kitchen." We are helping. <laughs> I don't have. I don't have any other cantrip that would help. Oh, yeah. Hey, unless you want, unless someone want, unless someone drops a plate, I can cast Featherfall on it. <laughs> Excellent contribution. <laughs> That's like flurry. Oh no, I can actually cast Shatter instead. Towel. <laughs> <clears throat> Did you just say you can cast Shatter? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I could play a prank on everyone and just, while one of them's being cleaned, cast Invisibility on the plate, so that it just like, looks like it got very clean. But... Too clean! <laughs> and Rorik shall use the open hand technique of destroying. <laughs> <laughs> It's just him standing there with a tea towel waiting for the place to come his way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if push comes to shove, I can deflect missiles. Someone throws a plate at him. Yeah, you'd always be able to perfectly catch it, right? Just, as long as you do it every yeah. six seconds. It depends. How, I, 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 can, I can catch it, dry it, and immediately toss it off to somebody else. How much damage do they do? <laughs> yeah. If a plate does more than the damage that you can absorb, then... For one, I'm very scared of that plate, and two...
So what you're saying is we're gonna um, first Hobbit's movie, the dwarfs in the Hobbit hole, <laughs> clean up the sin. <laughs> yes, that's what Bilbo Baggins hates. I like that's fitting for the inn we're in. Let's do it. Sure. <laughs> we all break in the song. Stanlock. Mm. We're helping. Yay. Only mild concern. <laughs> Two of us are actually helping. No, Pong's actually coming in to like, pick all the things up and move it. And, yeah, like, try and help as much as she can. Miuja will also clean his own plate. It is courteous to assist those who assist you. So, Sue, uh, where are we? Um, I also like try and converse when the rest of the, the party is here, um, specifically uh, the OG party. Uh, Sue looks out of the um, out of the window. Um, and she says, "Oh." We're, we're a, a night away, I think, from... Are you going back to where I picked you up? Hopefully a little further or to the side from there. I definitely don't want to trudge through that swamp again. Yes, uh, that... Yeah, don't, don't we just a night away? Lovely. Are we actively moving now? Yes. Oh, I thought it like stopped. No, no, it it continued. We <laughs> oh, power doesn't get motion the sickness. This is really great. You barely notice it. I ever thought of like attaching like big, big piece of cloth, and then like someone can like hang on the back with like a rope or something. I don't know why you'd want to do that. That doesn't sound very comfortable to me. I'm not going it's to like that fun, fast. Though. How fast are we going? In my head, it's like zooming, uh, but I'm um, guessing it's more just like a walking speed. Yeah, no, it's walking speed of 30. Okay. <laughs> No, you can't water ski behind the house. <laughs> but we're in a swamp. The best place for water skiing, clearly. Exactly. We've got natural ramps and everything. Brenda, <laughs> natural ramps. You mean mud banks? And yeah. And, you know, you have to avoid the trees. It's a whole obstacle course. It sounds like fun. It, 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 does, it does not sound like fun to Sue. To Sue, yes. <laughs> <laughs> to Pow, yes. <laughs> All right. So, you guys finish tidying up after yourselves um, and putting the plates away. Uh, what do you want to do? Do you uh, want to continue hanging around in the lounge or do you want to go up to, up to bed? After uh, finishing cleaning up, Coronius will uh, thank her for the meal again before Heading up to grab the same room as last time and start cleaning up, especially with all the uh, injuries from the damned ambush. Mm -hmm. Doors open for now, but I'll yeah. I'll ask Sue. Do you, do you have supplies to make cookies? Cookies? Yeah. What? What's a cookie? Oh. Wait. Can, 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 can I use your kitchen? Mm. It's like, yeah. Only 
you to clean up after yourself? Oh, always. Then go ahead. I'm gonna tidiest, like tidiest barbarian in the Feywild. Feywild. Yes, tidy. The barbarian will tidy as much as a barbarian does. <laughs> uh... Rage baking. <laughs> I'm, Palm's just gonna like try and use her unicorn cookie cutter and just try and make cookies. She has no idea how to bake. Oh dear lord. <laughs> Please roll with disadvantage for me. A... I'm gonna make that a constitution check. Sure wouldn't do survival. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, that comes after you eat a cookie. <laughs> Uh, would, Ru would Rourke be uh, aware of Pao's cooking skill or lack thereof? Uh, <laughs> Quote unquote. Depends how I... far back you know each other. Well, I imagine we were traveling for like a week or so, at least, like mm -hmm. before we got captured. I probably tried to make you like a stew at one point, and it was an experience. An experience. Uh, okay. If you if you roll low enough, you'll have to do animal handling to tame it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I was concerned about the okay, inn. So let's see. <laughs> so, so basically, Rurak let Pow cook once, and ever since then, he's been the uh, the the chef. Yeah. Designated oh, chef. Yeah. Yeah, but Paul's gonna try. If anyone wants to join her in the kitchen, you're all more than free to. Yeah, Ru Ruark's eye twitches and he very silently shakes his head at the rest of them, <laughs> slowly backing out of the kitchen. <laughs> Miyuja's is all wet ready on his way out, uh, playing a tune on his flute as he goes. Uh, and I'm going to give Bardic inspiration to Pow. Not that that will oh. save that role, but uh, uh, I give it anyways. <laughs> is that a D6? I mean, R Ruark's not it's trying a, to be mean, but it's that really subtle. No, no, no. no, no. Instead of a. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> Oh. Suitable warning. <laughs> the tune was just wow. nonchalant whistling. The equivalent. It, it really <laughs> was nonchalant whistling. But Abby, what's a six? <laughs> what's a six gonna give us? What kind of slime monster has she bred? <laughs> yeah, R it look very, like a unicorn. Very it, it it looks more like a rhino than a unicorn, so like a really fat looking unicorn. Um, it is perfect. Because it, you, you know, it's when cookies perfect. bake and they spread out, that's the shape yep. it took before it got slightly singed. Only slightly, I'm impressed with myself. If it was a nat one, it would be completely burnt. And I'll like come out. Wait, with... here, we, here we go. Oh no. There you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, so um it it comes out of the of the oven and you see that it's like slightly burnt on like the back edge where uh where where it would have been backed up to the back of the oven. And as you lift it off of the tray and go to check all, uh, the rest of it out, you see that the bottom has been burnt as well. Oh, like, Pong will just, like, happily, like, set them up, put them on a little plate. She'll probably, like, pick them up before they've had time to, like, cool, so, like, <laughs> a, the first few of them are, like, all broken and stuff. She's like, oh, why are they so soft? <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. basically, uh -huh. you've gone to pick them up immediately, and you've gone, hot, 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 hot and dropped it back onto the tray and it cracked and split. Yeah, and, and Rurik is very casually and lightly flapping his wings to kind of cause a bit of a draft to blow any um, nasally offending smells out the nearest windows. <laughs> All right. Sue, Sue, Sue. Uh, yes. Cookie. Oh. Cookie. <laughs> Oh. You're going to traumatize her it? away from cookies for life. Yep, there will the never be a cookie in this tavern again. Is is it meant to look like 
like that. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The saddest unicorn cookie. Um, she Muge is already getting a eulogy ready. She she takes one and and places it gingerly on her desk. Okay, thank and I'll like you. go around to everyone's rooms and like offer them cookies. Muja is uh, scarce. After uh, taking a look at the uh, tray, Karani also sort of cautiously picks one up with a mage hand, rather than uh, risking <laughs> touching it. Biohazard. I wanted to say thank you for letting us come along with you and helping us with our quest. We, I'm not sure what would happen if we stayed there and you guys didn't come to help. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. I am sure we definitely appreciate the help as well. Hopefully we can uh, keep helping one another. I do have a feeling that we're both heading in the same direction at least. Yeah. Well, you know, eat up, gotta have your strength. Bye! I, uh... Sure. Do I need to make a deception check to say to see if that works? <laughs> oh, she said bye, I no so I assume she's, like, okay. walked away already. Okay. Yeah, once she picked it up, for like, she won't say to what she eat it, she'll just... Bang. As long as no insight is being made, no deception needs to be made. Uh, I'm imagining <laughs> Karanios walking over to the window, opening it, and then using... Risby cast. Eat it. Pretty much something like that, yes. <laughs> Rourke at least is... at least breaks the cookie in half before tossing one, <laughs> casually tossing it out the window. <laughs> Slide of hand. <laughs> this is where in 20, 30 sessions time there's just going to be an army of strange <laughs> unicorn shaped creatures chasing after us. Oh god. Oh, that would be so funny. <laughs> DM starts writing notes. <laughs> Everyone has tossed out the cookies. <laughs> did did nah, anybody we try the cookies? Uh, you're just oh, going what? to currently be uh, still in like the uh, oh, what would you call it? The like common area of the in like fucking. I'm starting now. Don't worry. Yeah, uh, and right. he's just yeah, he's going to be playing on his uh, flute uh, and. He'll keep the uh, cookie, and he's going to think for a bit, and he'll give it a try. Uh, Do I need to make a con save? Not a... S mm, yeah. Yeah. Alright, boys. I'm giving myself a quick <laughs> bardic inspiration. As I play myself a tune on my flute that may or may not sound like a fucking funeral service. <laughs> and I'm going to con save. <clears throat> I can't. My bardic inspiration will not save me. I'm going to die, guys. <laughs> no, no, it's not <laughs> So, Miyuja, you taste, you know, you taste carbon. It's it's quite burnt on the bottom of that, of that biscuit. And... You immediately spit it out, but as you go to spit it out, like a piece kind of goes goes down the back of your throat quite unexpectedly, oh, no. and you start choking. Nice, nice. I've had very much a piece of with a biscuit before. I think we all have as bakers. Huge is going to be doing that thing that birds do when they eat the bones and need to carve them up. Oh, oh yeah. Question. <laughs> For Tasha's caustic brew, if I'm not using it with my focus, it has then it, a bit of rotten food is a material component. Would this qualify? Uh, would this qualify? <laughs> I I would say that there's a difference between a rotten food and a very 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 poorly cooked food. <laughs> but I'm not the GM. <laughs> I mean, there is an argument there to be made. 
Roll a d20 for me. <laughs> Let's I'm leave it in the hands of fate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, you, you could theoretically hold on to it 13. and see what happens. 13? Yeah, you can use it. <laughs> nice. Alright, I'll pocket it for late. Pocket okay, it. Yeah, a little too much yeast. Uh, As, Mija. like, I'm walking down with the tray, and, like, me just, like, sort of coughing in the background, I just, like, offhandly say to Sue, just be like, man, I don't understand why the um, eggshells are so crackly in these. I just head back into the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Su 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 Sue's eyes widen slightly, but you don't see that. And she quickly, like, takes the biscuit and places it in the bin behind the desk so you can't see. Nobody was I'm, having that. I'm waiting for, like, the end of the trip where there's, like, just cookies stashed everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but to get ambushed and everyone just starts throwing out cookies from all the pockets and stuff to try and <laughs> trick them. Alright, what, what is everyone else doing? Well, while Mugen is, like, sitting there gagging, uh, Rourke is, like, you know, off off at a different table, just quietly sipping his mug <laughs> and saying loud enough, <laughs> Rourke warned you. <laughs> <laughs> Very casually. Mew just said, sheds a single tear as he's trying to survive. Uh, I'd... I don't have to make another save to like not oh, no, you know, no, choke no, no, and no. die on the no, spot here, do no. I? <laughs> I'm not that cruel. I'm not that cruel. <laughs> a hardcore campaign. Lurak knows he'll cough it up eventually. Uh, yeah, and he does, and he uh, is going to immediately dispose of it out the nearest window. <laughs> Along with the rest of it. <laughs> Uh, hmm. Let us do this real quick. Just realized Howard was here this whole time as well, wasn't he? Because he joined us. <laughs> yeah, but he's yeah. made himself scarce. He's been scarce. avoiding it. <laughs> he has made <laughs> himself scarce. In fact, you guys don't actually know where he is. Or who is? Howard. Howard the human. Howard the gotcha. human wizard. I just had an idea if I offer him a cookie and his disposal of it is just opening a random portal and just dumping it somewhere. Oh, no, it wouldn't have been <laughs> that. But no, he's he has made himself scarce. You you guys actually don't know where he has gone. Well, that's just par for the course, really. You just got to look at his uh, flute for a moment and contemplate silently as he is meant to do. And he's going to walk off. Uh, uh, and he's going to go to Cranios. Cra names. Yeah, you got it right. Cranios' room. Uh, and he's going to quickly minor illusion a piece of the paper and he'll offer it to Cranios. Uh, I accept the paper and take a look at it? Uh, it reads off a simple question of uh, what is your favorite uh, school of magic? Hang on, I'm having to double check this just to make sure I get it right. Well, that actually is basically tied. So, uh, okay. And just sort of looks at it and dances, thinks for a moment and dances. Well, to be perfectly honest, in most situations I find illusion uh, quite useful. Uh, he's going to listen to that answer and he... He sort of narrows his eyes and he taps the paper again and it will read off and the, the word favorite will get bolder and say and, and to put more emphasis on it and then it'll read off Fav uh, I don't mean most useful I mean the one you love the most. Uh, 
honestly, I've never really given it much thought as to what I would enjoy. It's never really been a, uh, it's not, it's more been a tool than a pastime for me. Mm, he nods. Uh, he'll tap the paper again and it'll read, do you have no preference then into what you study? Uh, I don't so much study. My magic is more of a natural gift. Will not again, and uh, the paper will uh, go blank for a moment as he see he sort of puts his hand on his chin and thinks for a moment, uh, and then I'll tap it again and it'll read. Uh, that's all I wanted to ask. Thank you, uh, and he'll give you a s small little bow before uh, leaving the room, uh, and no the paper problem. just sort of evaporates. If there's anything else, please feel free to ask. He nods, and will silently leave and go back downstairs and start playing on his flute again. Uh, DM. Yeah? Something I was meant to ask before, but I actually kind of forgot. Would would it be possible for Palm to have, um, I guess it'd be like a simple sewer's kit or something? You know, just like needle and thread kind of thing. It wouldn't be like a full weaver's uh, tool or anything like that. If you can justify it to me, yeah. Why? Why? Why would you have it? Why would? Why would you want it? Well, she's always been a bit of a, um, like, like collector gatherer of things. Like the cloak she has on now is like the one that washed up kind of thing, and like she, her dress is a bit patchwork. So I was just wondering, basically, would she be able to like fix it up? Because I imagine it got a bit dishevelled over the last. Oh week yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no worries. Yeah, attitude. you can do that. Like, I wouldn't be using it for anything. Grand, it would just be literally like, you know, like yeah, so in as if like you're in the scouts or something. Yeah. Just all repairs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. I was just going to say after that conversation, Karenios closes the door to the room and just sort of before actually going to sleep and getting a rest, just sort of sits and actually thinks about the question for a bit. Just fate wasn't really, had no idea you could even really sort of have a favorite pool of magic. Just Messing around with minor illusion, just sort of making miniature illusions of the different spells that he uses and sort of represents them and just tries to figure out what one is my favorite. Do I even have one? Ah, uh, yes. Are you just already giving people midlife crises. Yep, Gradius <laughs> is having a midlife crisis right now. Um, uh, Vildresen, Ruark, what are you guys doing? I have my book. You you have your book. You're going to sit there and read, okay? Well, Rorik is probably just gonna like meditate and find his chill. Because okay. even though he's kind of a little more you know relaxed and everything, you know, still being inside a building is just kind of yeah. Yeah. So right. he'll he'll probably be like perched up on a windowsill, just kind of looking out and just kind of relaxing or trying to. <laughs> All right. So as the night wears on, you guys get your long rest and you go to sleep quite happy in the knowledge that whilst you are in the inn, you are completely safe. And um, come morning, uh, you will come down to find Sue preparing breakfast and Howard has made an appearance and is sitting at the table. Palm will like jump up, not like jump next to him, <laughs> the wrong term, but, but like 
we're like crashing through the ceiling right next to yes and we'll like budge right up next to howard even though she's like the first one there we're like hey human he scooches away a bit you, ever heard you of just sits on his face? other side Ah, uh, from time to time. Right. Karenios sort of comes down from the room and still messing around with minor illusion, just sort of trying to figure things out. And at this point is uh, trying to sort of mimic what Musia does with creating the paper and the words on it with minor illusion, just trying to see that because that's a trick that... Uh, Coronius has never tried before. Just trying to see if we can get it working. Make an arcana check. This is going to go horribly. I think my arcana is plus zero. It is. Uh, before you do that check, Muge is going to be playing uh, some music already in the yeah the common room again, and yeah. he he never went to sleep honestly. Uh, he doesn't need that. Uh, and as you enter, he would take note of what you're doing, and he's going to... I'm going to pass over a bardic inspiration to you. Hmm. Lovely. I shall use it. Is that a 1d6, yes? It is a 1d6, yes. Okay. That went rather well. Yeah, alright. So yeah. you're able to conjure up an image of paper with some words on it. The words aren't quite neat, and the paper is a little bit disheveled. It's not quite as neat as how you've seen Mayuja do it, but it's, it's not, not cursive, but it's legible. Yeah. It's worth putting on the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you wrote with this, and if this was the handwriting in a greeting card, you wouldn't need to buy a new one to try again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's 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 very legible. It it's just that they're a bit piggledy piggledy. You know how like if you write on a piece of paper that has no lines, you you tend to like drift up or down or yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So it's a bit like that. Still probably neater than my actual handwriting. <laughs> I I'm same. <laughs> So, uh, are we there yet? The DM gives you a flat stare. From across the table. There's another human! <laughs> there it is, I found one! Oh wait, no, that's just Sue. Hi, Sue! Hello, dear. You just looked awfully menacing for a second there. I got worried. Menacing. Me menacing? I said the DM <laughs> gave you a flat stare. I, 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 the joke really has menacing. failed. You, you, you rolled in that one on the joke, sadly. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> clearly, clearly, I understood. Clearly talking about Howard, the dreary magician. The dreary the magician. magician. The dreary magician. I'm gonna send. I you... think the DM just recognized that there was no way that she could appear menacing. <laughs> <laughs> Session's over. You can all go home. All right, guys. Yeah, campaign's <laughs> over. Oh, um... The power went out. All right. So. Hey, look up there. Like right, right up there. See that? That's the point. As it soars like an eagle over your head. Like a ruark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys are being mean to me today. Today, we love you, Abby. Are you, are you sure about that, Cass? We love you, Abby. <laughs> While you're DMing a campaign for us, yes, yes. Oh no. Contingent on Smile. this thing. <laughs> Contingent on this, this campaign continuing. 
<laughs> Contingent yeah. on you not being able to screw our sofa and emotionally ruin our characters that we are slowly becoming beloved to? Yes. Yay. I'm just looking forward to uh, someday shattering Miyuja emotionally and mentally. Looking Wait, what? Uh, what? No, I'm not doing anything like that. Can we that. go a lot closer? Or... Yeah, I was going to say, looking out the window, does it look like we're How much back in familiar ground? Uh, you're still moving. Um, at the minute, you're kind of moving through shallow water. So uh, you can you can kind of see like a bank just off in the distance, and it shouldn't take longer than uh, than an hour to reach. We get enough here then. This is awful. No, it's still moving. No. I sort of lean over to the rest of the group, sort of trying to be like whispering so Sue doesn't hear. It's like, do do we have to pay like a fare for this or something? Mm, it's more a hospitality both ways. At least it was for our previous stay. And it still is, oh, my okay. dear. Palm will just like sit up straight and say, like, yes? And there's always the confrontation with the hag. Indeed. Uh, you'll be wanting to go back the other way then? I'd imagine so. Seems like there's going to be a lot of back and forth in this awful swamp. Indeed. So we have uh, an arrangement to keep first. Which should hopefully uh, help us a bit. Ah, I see. Uh, will you be back here within the day? When we first came here, how long, roughly, was it a trip from Jingle Jangle to the inn? Uh, it was about uh, four hours. Four hours each mm. way? Yeah, that actually should be really easily doable should be but uh you should don't, you don't recognize looks at camera you if you're looking out the window uh, i see the problem now i would want to say yes but directions are fickle oh, don't around worry, here. Dear, i'll be dropping you off closer than when i picked you up before ah oh, thank you Oh, so the should is even more likely. But still not a certainty in this place. I'm sure there is a certainty here. Just as a uh, subtle jab at the person who was supposed to be guiding them the first time, Karenio says, yes, it's really a rather strange place. Could, one moment you could be walking, the next you could be uh, falling through some, dragged through some random portal. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, I just, I got, I got, I, you know what, you wouldn't understand. And he goes back to, like, eating his breakfast. He's such an excellent guy. I'm so glad he's back. Very pog. Alright, so you all finish your breakfast, and um, by the time you do, the inn has stopped. Just a small note, did not mean for that play on words, just a small uh, thing over breakfast. Yeah. After noticing the uh, additional help when practicing the uh, illusion trick, just as a sort of thank you. Uh, Karanius passes a note over to Musia that, in somewhat legible handwriting, does read, thank you. Uh, Musia plays a small tune of affirmation. What a tune of affirmation is, I will leave that to you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> affirming tune is very affirming. Yeah, that was just a small little note thing. Completely yeah. irrelevant to moving forwards. Yeah. 
but like I said, the ant has stopped moving. I take it we're uh, close by then. Uh, yes, Darius, this is definitely your stop. Uh, you said, uh, did you say where you were going? I think, I believe we did. And the name is escaping me again. Ptolemy Hill. Ptolemy Hill. Uh, uh, yeah, Ptolemy Hill is, uh, should be just through that, that field there. And she kind of points, uh, and you can see that, uh, through a line of trees, there is a open space of, I want to say it's a field, but it looks more like just mud. What may have once been a field before this place was flooded. My favorite kind of field. Yes. Ah, right then, Howard, you know where to go, right? Enough. Thank you. BMing Howard. Thank you once again for your hospitality. Hopefully we'll uh, be back again. And hopefully it's not too much trouble. Hopefully soon as well. Ah. Be stuck up there too long. No worries, no worries. Uh, I don't think the end's going to be moving for a good long while yet, so... But uh, I wouldn't tarry if I were you. We'll try to be quick. Yeah, I'd love to make more cookies here. <laughs> she gives you as a, quick as needs a look. Perennial sort of picks up on it and says, as quick as we can be. We're not going to rush. <laughs> um, uh, before you all leave, uh, above board, because I don't want to roleplay uh, Amanita, she's going to stay behind in the inn. She, she got sick oh. eating one yeah. of the cookies. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, she's going to stay behind in the inn and recover from a cookie that had apparently eggshells in it, as well as it being burnt, and uh... Burnt eggshell cookies? Mm. Yuck. Alright, so... The rabbit people eat strange things. That add free eggs! So... Have you made those before? Um, no, I'm trying to remember, like, this old book that washed up one day. The book washed up? Yeah. Do you think maybe a few of the steps in the recipe might have been ruined by the water? I never thought of that. I'm just imagining that it's not like that. I'm just imagining that it's just a really bad cookbook with really poor instructions that someone got frustrated with and threw out. <laughs> That's what I'm, is going through my head right now. I feel like you're probably missing a few steps in your recipes if, you're, if you've been basing your cooking off the book. I wasn't the one who really did the cooking on my travels. No, I can see that. So, I, I'm trying to remember from a book that I no longer have. It's... I tried. You certainly did. Now, yeah, let's head out. If we can make it through this swamp in decent time. So, Just another bit of flavour keeping it up since it's the first time this group is sort of travelling together through the actual thick swampy bit. Yep. Just Karanios is uh, mage handing up the bottom of his robes to make sure it doesn't get too muddy. Mage of flies. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, we are also, tree to tree. more flavour. <laughs> more more flavour for the uh, new people here. Uh, Karanios has a really shit fashion sense. Uh. <laughs> A complete lack that, of that. That's a noof. Yeah. Ruark would probably just presume it's the way of his people. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, 
Okay. Well, that, that's how they dress. Well, considering that there's no other dragonborn to go I mean, by, that's fair. The, the robes yeah. Karanios is wearing right now aren't terrible. But that's not to say that Karanios decided on the robes for themselves. They may have been a gift. Someone from someone who actually knows what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so you all track your way through uh through the bog towards this open flat of mud. And uh as you take a few steps onto the the mud field itself. Um, you notice that there are um, the remains of uh, elves and uh, Fomorians alike just scattered everywhere. There's rusty armor, broken swords everywhere. What you've stepped onto is an old battlefield. I'm fairly oh, sure we that. didn't pass through this on our way through last time. You just buy our illusions of peace. still alive around. You see any movement or any signs of life. Um, as you continue on, you take a few more steps, and 20 feet away from you, two suits of elven armor get up out of the mud. And as you watch, bits of mud fall off of them, and they like detritus falls from them and stuff. As they stand up and turn to regard you, and it's just the armor. Just the armor. Is there somebody alive over there? Uh, do you make any specific movements? As you say that. Mugen was think. mid minor illusioning a piece of paper uh, with just a ca big capital F onto one of the corpses. Yeah, Rourke is getting ready for a dive bomb just in case. I'm looking around. Uh, Vildrasen, you notice as you start moving your head to look around that um, one of the suits of armor copies you. And also moves your head, moves their head around, or rather their helmet. Oh, and I noticed that. You notice that. You're you're keeping an eye out, so I say that you'll no you'll notice it. Well, seems like that one's for me. I would say this seems really out of the ordinary, but at this point, with where we are. Making new friends everywhere we go out here. Ooh, You're just going to start dancing and see if one of them armor. puppies. <laughs> um, can I have a marching order, please? Damn it, it's not a good dan. So, Vildrasen was in front. Uh, who was who was next to him or behind him? Palm would be probably quite excited and be quite near the front, trying to see what's going on. Huja will be in the middle. Um, I guess Rurik would technically be in the back. Yeah, Karanios would be sort of in the middle as well, a step or two behind the uh, two close quarters people. All right, so, Pal, as you are moving around to see, um, uh, to to see more, um, are you like kind of like? I don't know what the word is. Leaning. Are you leaning from side to side and jumping to see if you can see around Veldrasen? Oh yeah, for sure. Alright. Um, the other suit of armor is copying every movement that you make. Is there only two? There is only two. I said. Well, I guess that suits yours then. <sighs> Wait, do I get a suit of armor now? Oh, I yes, it's your own suit of armor over there. Rabbit. 
Okay, and Palm's just gonna walk up to it. Like, jog up to the suit of armor. Was not prepared for this. Hold on. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the the DM's say. glaring at me for saying that. <laughs> so the, uh, the two of her friends have just said, hey, go do it. The music for the Viennese Wall. Mewja didn't starter. say anything. <laughs> the music for the Viennese Wall. <laughs> Love it. <clears throat> um, so as, as you start taking steps towards it, it does mimic you and take steps towards you as well. Hello, friend. Palm's gonna start waving at it as she's walking. Uh, it starts waving back. See, it's <laughs> friendly. Still walking towards it. It it was only twenty feet away from you, and if you're both walking towards each other, it's oh, okay. only ten foot. So you 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 meet pretty quickly. I'm gonna like fist bump it. Uh, you raise uh, your fist, and as you do, it raises uh, the mirrored fist. So you can fist bump. Boop! Wait, can I give myself a self boop? And I'm gonna like do a boop onto the armor where the nose would be. How tall is your character? Um, I actually have this one written down. Um, they are four foot eleven inches. Okay, the suit of armor is is considerably taller at five foot seven, and uh, your I can you, you I got jump as you you kind of like jump you you jump a little bit to give them a boop, kind of where the nose would be on the helmet. Um, they also do a jump in a a boop kind of at the same like in the they copy your movements exactly so it goes way over your head palm will just have sort of lower lip out sad face like no aim lower it's not fair <laughs> gross I'm going to walk around mine. Okay, so you start circling and they start circling. And if you keep... would oh, go ahead, sorry. Go, ahead. go on. Oh no, I was just gonna say you just saw what Power's trying to do and will walk over to her and then pick her up so that she can be at face level with the <laughs> suit of armor. <laughs> if Pa will allow that. Palm will be fine with it if you can pick her up. I don't know. How heavy is Pao? Um, 138 pounds? I'm, I, 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 time to look up weight values. <laughs> Sixty-two and a half kilos. Seven. Seven. <clears throat> how how much was Pow? Is that it? can I? Can, <laughs> this is more complex than I thought it would be. D and D. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know. I was mainly asking like for for. for, for the DM was like, I, I don't know. Palm's quite like small but mighty, so I was like, I don't know what you're if you would be able to pick her up if, if like she she's got her arms out. It's like, let's go. But she also still DM, can I pick up very, very Palm? Big axe. Um, roll a strength check. Price. This is uh, going to be embarrassing. Oh no! Why is there a plus one there? 
Oh, should it just why be a it? minus one? So it should be it's... 18? Yeah, but I don't know why it did a plus one there. That's weird. That is weird. Um, yeah, Hold on, let it... me do a deck dirty. Yeah, it's doing that for everything. Is that because of my... Oh, is that because of my jack of all trades? Why would it do that? That's, That's not how jack of all trades works. Actually, no. Is yeah. it how jack of all trades works? Uh, it's, I'd check it on your character sheet. Right. By the way, it's high uh, level, so I'll check any, it on trade. Yeah, no, it's any ability check, so Jack of All Trades does affect it. Never mind, it is 19. 19. I thought it was skill okay. check. I thought yeah. Jack of All Trades was skill checks, it's not with ability a... check. Okay. Ability check. Yeah, with a big heave, you do manage to lift Pow up. Yay. Boop! How you, how you are now at booping level. The suit of armor boots you. Hehe. <laughs> so this, I'm guessing the suit of armor doesn't like magically just float in the air once I get picked up. Uh, no. I hope the fuck not. But, but it is holding the pose of <laughs> you being. It was. <laughs> yeah, it's holding the same pose as you are as you are being picked up. So if you're like leaning back or Keep leaning posing. forward. Or whatever. It's probably it's probably up on its tiptoes because your feet are just kind of draped down. Yeah. Hold on, what happens if I what happens if I hold how like sideways though? Oh, here we go. What happens if you give her a DDT? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> clearly no wrestling fans in here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm familiar with the term, but I don't know the uh, exact wording. I figured it was some wrestling move, but I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it is. Yeah. But my original question, does it go sideways when I hold power uh, sideways? It, it tries to. Obviously it falls back into the dirt. Good, we win. If if I go up and move Pal's suit of armor, does it move Pal? I don't have any armor on. Oh, sorry, you mean the armor oh. linked to me? Sorry, <laughs> I got very confused there. Um, no. Okay. Can I get in the suit Wait, of armor? Wait, so uh, you you go over and do that, yeah? You you are touching the the other suit of armor. Yes. Yeah. Uh. No. It, it doesn't. It doesn't affect Al at all. So can Pong get in the suit of armor? Like try to wear it. Euro believes this to be a terrible idea. DM. He legit believes this to be a terrible working. idea. So I have this uh, portable hole and this um, bag of holding. Now, if I were to... <laughs> no, no, you that don't. That like a great idea to put one into the other. This is going into the territory of firing fireballs into a bag of holding because they would be preserved and then just invert, op emptying out, like tipping the bag of holding inside out just for a massive explosion of dozens of fireballs. I love casting catapult onto several dozen thousand coins and then putting it into a bag of holding it only to turn it inside out. Yeah, I mean, it's a suit of armor like now, Um, what, what do you remove first? I guess I'll start with, like, a gauntlet. Okay, as you go for uh, a gauntlet, um, the suit of armor withdraws the gauntlet from you and tries to backpedal in the mud, but it can't because that's where Valdrisson is. This feels like bullying now. Yeah, I was hoping it would be like friends and we could like fuse together and be like super become powerful. one yeah become as gods
but oh well. Well, as interesting as these two are, at the very least they don't seem hostile. Just sort of looking around this uh, battlefield, obviously you said that there's Elven and... I forgot the name of the other thing. Uh, wow. Fomorians. Fomorian. Fomorian bodies. Does it seem like there's more of one than the other? Does it seem like we can tell who won or lost this battle? Mm, make a history check. History. How am I with history? Pretty much exactly the same as I am with everything else. Completely neutral. Yeah. And yet I still roll 15s consistently. Um, you can you can see that uh, from the looks of this battlefield and this battlefield alone, um, it was the elves who won. Okay. They won. Rather strange that they would leave the bodies of their comrades behind. Well, this is the Feywild. Mm. Maybe they struggled to find this place again. I mean, they may have won, but we do not know how they had won, or whether it was by their own design. What kind how of How many bodies are here? Um, you can't tell what kind of elves. So not a ladder. Uh, they're more bones the, than bodies, are they? They are more bones than bodies, but judging from the two animated suits of armor in front of you, uh, they're not a ladrin, as you would know a ladrin to dress. No. Alright. I wonder what they were doing in the Feywild. Very good question. I mean, how? what must have you doing in the Feywilds? Also a good question that I'm asking myself daily. Nah, you get used to ignoring that question in your head. The voices go away after the first couple of years. Nucha fucking <laughs> gives a look at Pau. I see. How many of each bodies are there? Uh, it's kind of a 50-50 a split. Uh, so it's not no, like, no, two like to how many? No. What do you mean? Like... Two to one, like two of the uh, Fomorians to one of the elves, or what have you. No, no, it was, um, it was pretty evil. No, I mean, I mean, are we, are we talking a battle with twenty bodies? <laughs> are we talking a battle with a hundred bodies? Are we? Um, I mean, are we walking around the fields of Pelennor after the fact. Many. Okay. There are many. Many. Hmm. This entire oh. place is strange. I'm guessing this. You can say that no... anywhere in this realm. Oh, well, can we just gonna... anything fun or magical around? The... Maybe they left some artifacts. I would say that seems a bit disrespectful. Above board, there or not. You just gonna walk up to one of the uh, suits of armor that's uh, mimicking, uh, and is going to play some music on his flute. Uh, are you <coughs> are you walking up to the one that you've been bullying or the other one? Uh, he's going to approach the one that has been half bullied, to be fair, uh, <laughs> and but he's going to keep his distance, like a good like ten, fifteen feet or so, and just play some music on his flute for it. All right. Um... I'm going to say that both uh, Pal and uh, Veldrasen took a step back as it stood back up again um, before Muja starts playing on uh, playing on his flute. And you see the the suits of armor kind of mimic the hand movements, um, but obviously he's not making any sound and there is no actual flute there. Damn, bro, my rolls have been sucking when I do performance. You rolled a 9, it's still it's, a it's 16. The it's the humanity. No, I rolled a 7 and it adds 9. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. A plus 9 modifier. <laughs> just... Rolling bad with a plus 9 modifier is damn near impossible. At the yeah. bare minimum, you roll average. 
<laughs> it's great. Expertise is very fun. Muja is very happy that it's mimicking him, though. He has friend. Aww. Hmm. I wonder what prompts them to change oh, target. You bullied? Didn't change until you came up to it and started playing. You just shrugs and keeps playing. I'll go up to the one that was being bullied and sort of pat it on the head a little bit and be like, it's okay. Wait, but not is, all mean. isn't Muja at the one that was being bullied? Yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't respond to you. <coughs> it just keeps moving its fingers like it's playing the flute like just... me. Yeah. Out of curiosity and experimentation with this. The uh, one that Muge is not currently in front of, the one that was in front of Vildresen. Yeah. Vildresen, there's Vildresen a few steps back from it. Um, it's... I'd say it's still, like, 20 feet away from Vildresen, because they circled each other. Okay, and... How tall was, uh, Fo again? How tall? Uh, uh, 4 foot 11. That's exact. That's just within minor illusion height. So I am going <laughs> to, uh, in front of Vildresen, sort of between him and the suit of armor mimicking him. I am going to attempt to conjure an illusion of uh, Poe exactly, and then just start moving that illusion a little to see if the suit of armor mimics the illusion. How far away from the suit of armor do you? Uh, ten it? feet. Ten feet. Um, yeah. it it mimics the the movement. It mimics the illusion. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So it's just the closest things to it. I turn on to the rest of the group. Can we keep it? Don't worry, it wasn't your bullying that put it off you. I want to keep them. Well, if they stay as they are, they're probably going to follow us either way. Ooh. Wait, no, if they mirror and we walk away, that means they walk away. Mm -hmm. Aww. Sag. Sadly, I don't think there's a way for us to stick together with them. But at the very least, they can uh, carry on with whatever it is they want to be doing. Question. Can I lift the suits of armor? Like one of them? God. Uh, strength check. <laughs> yeah, strength check. Natural twenty. Oh. <laughs> this leave it to the poor, barbarian. This poor boy suit of armor. Why'd you have to say you, poor? You go and grab <laughs> grab it by the waist, which is around the around the bottom of the chest piece, and as you heave and lift, go to the left. You notice that the, um, I don't know what the leg pieces of armor are called, but you notice that Reeves. they stay in place. Reeves. In the ground. You, you just kind of fucking cut him, yeah, just cut him in half. Yeah, you just cut him in half. Pick up the top half of the armor. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry, Mr. Armor. And I'll, I'll put it like back down. This is why you can't have nice things. Oh, you just looks horrified because I assume you picked up the one that he was playing with. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he ripped his friend in half. Damn it, not again. Ah, fine. Well, anyone else got any ideas? Or should we move on? I think we should keep moving if we want yeah. to make sure we're back in time to catch the inn. If we're leaving, then Muge is going to slowly go to the one that was mimicking him and make, try to slowly hug it. Uh, you you approach, arms outstretched, and the the 
the suit of armor copies you with with arms outstretched. Hug. Hug. And and you you move closer and you wrap your arms around him. He he wraps his arms around you. I'd ship it. Do do you go for the the back pat? Yes. You feel the uh the armor pat you on the back as well. I am satisfied. <laughs> as Palm's walking away, it's like, once you're done with your surrogate father, can you come along? You just said just sheds a single tear, pats the armor on the shoulder. Uh by <laughs> uh you said that the armor is five foot seven. Yeah. Huge is a foot taller than it. Oh. Huge is six foot seven. Oh my god, okay. Big bird boy. Big bird this boy. I wasn't quiet. expecting the bird boy to be that big, but okay. Tall. Tall. <laughs> he is tall. Okay. Uh, he pats he pats the uh, suit of armor on the shoulder uh, in a friendly goodbye and moves to join the rest of the group. The, uh, the suits of armor turn around and uh, mimic you walking away from them, which means that they are everybody following walks you. away from everything. Oh, wait, they're following. They're not mimicking walking in the opposite direction. No. Huge makes a thonk emoji. <laughs> no, they. Yay, friends! Concerning. Are you guys gonna continue walking across the battlefield? Huge and minor illusions of piece of uh, paper Rourke. that just says it's probably fine. Rourke is flying and keeping distance from the uh, the following armor because that's a little weird. Yeah, Coronius is oh, fine with it, but just sort of making sure to keep a bit of a, a pace ahead of the armor. Just to make sure goes up not to... too close. Muge is going to go up to the one that was uh, mimicking him and minor illusions a piece of paper that's like the size of a sticky note and places it on his chest and it just reads uh, Jonathan and then he turns around and continues on his way. Yeah, and then we'll turn the armor gives you a pat on the chest. <laughs> there it yes, that too. <laughs> Actually, it'd be a pat on the stomach with the height difference, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, either that or he'd... Belly. Oh, look, no, he's six feet tall, that's right. I was going to say, or either that or he could just gets palmed in the face. <laughs> Fucking decked. We can now tell them apart. Roll... Roll a... Roll an Arcana check for me, Miuja. Ah, uh, cool. That's- I, I'm good at those, I swear. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Still better than me. As it's just a sticky note that you've illusioned, um... Some deep, uh, arcane magic flows through you, and the, uh, post-it note becomes real. I love him. Jonathan will forever be my boy. So, Howard, how do we get to where we're going? Oh, yeah, I forgot Howard's here. Um, Howard... Who's been watching you all kind of exasperatedly? Um, kind of just looks at you and goes, uh, She said to just go across the field. I assume it's just that way. Okay, thanks, guide. I'll just point over to the direction he vaguely pointed in. Or Howard doesn't get a break. <laughs> Had a whole break while we were dancing with the armor. 
I get the feeling that he is the rincewind to everyone else's two flower. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So you guys managed to cross the battlefield with nothing else happening. Just these two animated suits of armor following behind as they mimic your movements. And um, as you all leave the battlefield, Miuja, do you do you mm -hmm. want to do you want to interact with Jonathan some more? Uh, hmm. Miuja's going to like. Are they what like following a distance behind us, or are they like starting to like be at our side as we're walking? Uh, you turn back around to put the post-it note on him, so uh, you are now walking kind of alongside him. I'm going to uh, link my arms with him. <laughs> like, arm in arm, and I'm going to be very jolly as I follow along with the group. Alright. So, as you, as you step off of the battlefield... Don't you, you dare do it. Miuja, you you feel a a tug at your your arm that you've linked with Jonathan, and uh, as you you turn to look at Jonathan, uh, you see that he physically cannot leave the battlefield, and his no! his his gauntlet, which is here my arm, boy, kind of just falls away, and both suits of armor. Crumple to the ground. Yes, oh. Miuja immediately falls to his knees at Jonathan. <laughs> he he gives oh, a silent we'll fade or no. <laughs> well, no. if they work the way I think they do, Very mute, Jonathan no. always be able to visit. Miuja makes a very small nod of like, in agreement, and wipes away a tear. It was probably an enchantment for the battle. Palm would, like, put an arm around uh, Muja and be like, It's okay. And, like, Muja. offer up my arm to, like, link with and be like, We we can, you know, link arms if you want to. It's, mine's a bit smaller, though. Muja picks up the uh, notes. Uh, with Jonathan's name, is like, is that still like permanently real? The the note, yeah. He's going to like pocket it uh, inside of his vest, and he's going to stand up and, uh, as though he's like flipped a switch, and he's like now back to regular Muge. Uh, he uh, links arms with uh, Pow and uh, continues on his merry way. Okay. Oh, we'll start skipping. We're setting all the seeds for the final boss fight when we're on uh, when we're all on down to single digit health points. Riding <laughs> a mutated <laughs> unicorn cookie. Jonathan should come to rescue. <laughs> Jonathan, my boy, will rescue us. I believe in it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, so. Um you step off the battlefield and make your way straight through uh, the small thicket of, of trees that you found yourself in. Um, and uh, you notice that there's a, a low-lying hog uh, through this thicket and you come out the other side and notice that uh, Bellamy Hill is right in front of you. I'm very glad you didn't say missing. <laughs> I was prepared for either or, honestly. Uh, the hill has feet too, oh god, no. Actually. Actually it does. <laughs> oh, looks at like camera. <laughs> the secret the ingredient is legs. Alright, uh... Let me just find my notes on Tell Me Hell. 
kind of fetish bullshit so, have I walked into? For those of us who have not been here before, what are we looking at? Right. What you are looking at is... Give me a sec. I need to find my notes. The big ass hill. It is a big ass hill. Got a big dumpy. A giant we just use the, the wrong, post name. Did we use the wrong chance on the mirror to get to a portal here and go to the feet wild instead of the fey wild? <laughs> feet wild. Uh, okay. You are greeted by the scent of sweet smelling fruit. Damp, downy, silvery grass moss blankets, a gentle up wood slope before giving way to a craggy ridge that marks the top of the hill. Dozens of enormous willow trees dot the hillside, swaying as though in a breeze despite the absence of one. Oh, this place is cute. Muja wishes he had that effect with his feathers. Karenios just sort of walks up to a familiar looking tree, or one of the familiar looking trees at the bottom of the path and sort of waves at it, brings out the uh, mage hand again, and just as he starts to make his way up the hill slowly just sort of tries to pick off any uh, bugs or moss or lichen or what have you that seems to be growing along the trees again. Uh, they seem thankful. Do try to be polite to the trees. Ways. As I'm like walking past, I'll like give the trees a little pet. They like don't seem to like it, but they don't seem to hate it either. Rourke was Egypt. tempted to flap into the branches, but now he has reservations. <laughs> Very concerned. You're just gonna just play on his uh, flute as they go. Is this place it, is mostly fine. Is it a sad tune because of Jonathan? He's trying to stay happy right now. <laughs> Be strong for mother. <laughs> I'm being as strong as I can. What did you say, Valdison? This place is mostly fine. Indeed. Definitely a lot safer than uh, certain hollowed out tree stumps. Definitely. Alright, so you pretty much make your way up to the top of the hill without any incident. Because you've already you've already spoken to the trees. And um you get back to the top of the hill, in which in front of you is a small hut. How small are we talking? It's it's cottage size. Okay. Turn to uh, look at Vildrasen and Howard. So, would either of you like to uh, do the honors, or shall I knock? By all means, lead the way. I assume Howard just gives a very flat stare, so I shall uh, go and <laughs> knock on the door. He does indeed. Right, so you knock on the door. And after a, a few seconds wait, you hear a very faint uh, jangling of keys getting closer. And you hear a small voice say, Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. And, and, and the door opens. And for those that don't know what Jingle Jangle looks like, she is a little goblin with a coat that is absolutely covered in keys. Oh. Can I help you? Can Jingle Jangle help you? 
Actually, we have hopefully been successful in helping you, like we said. Oh, so it's you again. Come in, come in. Proniosa steps inside, presumably having to duck down a bit under a door frame meant for a goblin. Follow in afterwards. Howard stays outside. Paul's definitely going inside. All right, so. Rock is having reservations about going inside a small cottage designed uh, for small people. Uh, small people. Howard looks at uh, the bird folk and, and he says, uh, You don't have to go in. It's a very tight space. Muja enters. He doesn't care if he has to become fucking as small as possible. He's and he's entranced by jingle jangles jingling jangling keys. <laughs> <laughs> well, like how shiny are these keys? <laughs> uh, some are very shiny, some aren't. She just really likes keys. Hmm. She loves keys. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna once again reiterate, what, what kind of fetish bullshit have I walked into? Yeah, R Rourke's gonna stay outside, because I, I don't think the keys are gonna be cool and shiny enough to risk the claustrophobia. Roll a wisdom save to resist the jingling of keys. <laughs> they'd, they'd, have to be some, they'd have to be some pretty ornate, shiny-ass keys in order to overcome this kind of uh, claustrophobia. Because, like, like, he fucking hates small areas, period. Yeah, Especially after the week he had. Yeah, yeah. it's it's fine. We work and stay outside. So, yeah. Muja and Pal, as this is your first time entering, um, what you see as you enter the cottage is keys, more keys, a few bits of furniture, and even more keys. So there are keys littering every surface. There are keys hanging from the walls. There's keys hanging from the ceilings. There's just keys everywhere. Yuja would be wide-eyed if not for the fact that he's an owl and owls are always wide-eyed. Even more wide-eyed than usual. Yeah. <laughs> Bigger wide-eyed. Bigger wide-eyed. Just minor illusion, your eyes bigger. <laughs> minor illusion. Bigger eyes. So. Um, Jingle Jangle looks over the new, the, the new people. I don't believe we've met. Hey, I'm Pong. Uh, is busy staring at all the keys. Some new friends we made when we went to uh, get back what was taken from you. Oh, did we get the key for her? Key? key? Indeed we did. Uh, yeah. the key. I'm fucking drooling. You bring key for Jingle Jangle? I'm holding it out. She kind of almost snatches it from you. Thank you. Thank you so much for Jingle Jangle's key. And she goes and um, fixes it to that that uh, spot that was missing missing a key on her coat. Is there Think a window? Find the right one. There, there is a window. Is it key shaped? It's keyhole shaped. Well, if it's Close large enough. enough to peep through, if it's large enough to peep through, Rourke will totally peep through the keyhole window. Oh yeah, you can definitely peep through the window. Oh yeah, we're peeping. <laughs> hey, you said it. Uh, what was it? Uh, what was it? A jingle jangle promise you in return for the return of Jingle Jangle's key. I believe some uh, helpful information. Oh, I can tell. 
Jingle Jangle can tell you what Jingle Jangle knows. What does Jingle Jangle have to say? I am lost in my notes again. I green, I believe. Well, we were trying to get to the hag. Yeah, it was a specific name. Oh, we're looking for Slack Jawed Lorna, weren't we? At the mention of that, Jingle Jangle kind of recoils. Uh, oh, you're looking for the for the haggling. Are we? Yes. Yes. Oh. You best be careful. That haggling... That haggling is not just what she seems. No. What is she? I don't know, we gave you a pretty good key. Just... Yes or no? Tell Jingle Jangle, do you know the name of the hag in charge of Hither? Yes. Okay. Uh. Well... The slack jaw haggling is ah, it's mm, hard to explain. It is the hag, but it isn't the hag. Could you be a little bit more specific? The hag of Hither can create kind of smaller versions of herself and using those smaller versions can perform whatever she desires around uh, around hither so she can stay nice and safe she splits off smaller parts of herself yes so she could be anyone no We all only know of, of the slack jaw, but in, in the, the slack jaw looks like her, but smaller? Jingle Jangle thinks that the slack jaw is the only, only one that goes around hither. I see, and, and where would we find that? Hypothetically, uh, sorry, you kind of both spoke over each other there. Go ahead. Where would we find the hag herself? Hmm, she has a, she has a, uh, a, a home. Uh, uh, a 
and and you see her get like visibly distressed and she starts kind of like picking, it's fine. picking up we, keys. We, we know we know of the home and what it looks like. Uh, as for just hypothetically speaking, if something were to happen, I don't suppose you'd know if something were to happen to one of these split off pieces. Would that injure or affect the hag at all in any way? suppose it might. Okay. That is actually some very helpful information. The uh, last thing to ask is, well, I don't suppose you happen to know roughly where to find the, uh, I am terrible with remembering things today and my notes are really not helping. Not the hag, the uh, split off one that we're that Howard's also uh, looking for. Oh, you're looking for Slackjaw. Uh, Slackjaw. In the last session, you learned that she was heading towards Downfall. And I don't suppose you can tell us anything of Downfall. Oh, well, yes. I don't like going there much, but yes, yes, I, I, I can. Um. Uh, it's where the hag's home is, um, but also, uh, it's where those pompous bullywugs are. Oh, what do they call it these days? Ah, uh, the, the soggy court. The soggy court. Out of curiosity, are you scared of the hag? And what, is that why you're hesitant to talk about her? Uh, let me look through my notes. I. I asked Jingle Jangle asked for her help. Jingle Jangle got more than she asked for. What did you ask for? I I used to be terribly afraid of of something. I, I can't. I, I think. I think it was getting caught on the wrong side of a, of a, of a locked door. Jingle Jangle asked for help to overcome the fear. You just Definitely. you you just watch her kind of like scoop a, a whole pile of keys and bring them towards her. You just going to uh, walk over at this point and minor illusion a piece of paper and hold it out to Jingle Jangle and it just reads, uh, "What's your favorite key?" She kind of smiles, and 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 uh, she holds up like one finger, and she scuttles out of the room. And you hear like so many keys being moved. You hear like crashes, bangs. Yes. More more I, jingles, more jangles. I, I'm imagining a Scrooge McDuck vault, but instead of gold, it's yeah. keys. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not quite as big, but yes. Uh, and, and she swims through it daily, and and she eventually uh, returns, holding out this pristine 
golden uh ornate key um that is it's well it's a key but it's 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 really pretty and she's 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 kind of holding it very gently and she goes ah, jingle jangles favorite keys is very shiny you just like anime big eyes <laughs> And he nods and then taps the um, piece of paper again, and uh, it change the words. It goes blank for a second and then changes to, uh, "Why is this Jingle Jangle's favorite key?" What? Why? Why do you mean why? Jingle Jangle's favorite key is Jingle Jangle's favorite key because it is. He nods as though this is a the most straightforward answer he could possibly have <laughs> asked for. And he bows in thanks, uh, and then the paper disappears. So, if we were to, like, kick the hag's ass, would that be a problem for you? N n no. Uh, be quite... Awesome. Helpful. Seems like pretty much everybody here wants to see that hag gone. Seems perfect. We know roughly where she is now, right? More or less. You know where a piece of her might be, at the very least. I imagine the piece of her will be a bit weaker, probably easier to ambush and attack. You'd hope so. But you can never be sure with hags. Always have some kind of tricks up their sleeve. Yeah. Well, shall we, uh... Leave Jingle Jangle in peace and you can look after your keys while we go after the hag. Ask if you have any more questions. I can't think of anything. He just shakes his head. Well, Jingle Jangle, it was very helpful speaking to you again. Thank you uh, very much. I will say, no, uh. No, th thank you very much for bringing back Jingle Jangle's key. Don't worry about it. I, I will say, do try to be a bit careful as. The, uh. The brigands may still be around. That's. Well, in general. It's not as though we, uh. got rid of them entirely. So you may want to, uh, keep your keys. Okay. Jangle, jangle. Thanks you for the advice. Don't worry, I'll be, uh, keeping an eye out for any annoying long blue scarf-wearing rabbits. Ah. Actor? Oh. Yes, I, uh, we met briefly. We saw him and then we didn't. Ah, he got you too. Mm. Thinking about that, is the uh, mark still there or has it cleared up? Uh, 
which mark are you talking about? From the uh, the brand. one from Acton's brand. Oh yeah, no, that's gone. Okay. Yes, it was uh, quite the introduction that I uh, hope to reciprocate at some point. Now that there's four of us, it'll be easier. Well, now I'll just have to be, hope you're satisfied with the fact that I burnt down his favourite chair. Uh, this uh, Jingle Jangle kind of looks a little confused, but also amused. Hmm. And uh, with that, she kind of starts ushering you all towards the door. See you later, Jingle Jangle. Bye now. Yuja plays a little tune on his flute as he leaves. Mind how you go. Once the uh, door is closed behind us, I'll uh, turn to Howard and... Assuming he wasn't... Not sure if he was actually paying attention or even... Oh no, he was, he was fully listening in. Okay. Well, it seems we learned a bit more about the one who has whoever it is you're looking for. And she's headed home towards downfall. That would appear to be the case. Hmm. So aside from being the home to the hag and this soggy court, what exactly is downfall? It's uh hang on and uh howard starts uh creating a crude illusion of a map for you guys it is very crude and he he mutters under his breath about being uh not as efficient with delicate spells such as illusions and he shows you all this uh, crude map of downfall um and it, uh he points to like the top section of the map he goes uh that is um where we'll find the hag and then he points to the the lower section of the map and he goes this is the bullywug town of downfall the entire town how far away is it uh it's not far from the tollway where I found you guys. So we were quite close Yo. to begin with. Yep. Mm -hmm. It seems a lot of back and forth today. Mm -hmm. That's at least we know for sure now. And even it's if it's a little bit of information, learning that uh, the hag tends to split off pieces of herself is quite good to know. I don't suppose you uh, know whether these bullywugs are happy to uh, be sharing their space with the hag or not? Uh, from what I understand, they are quite beholden to her, yes. Ah, so it seems starting any sort of riot isn't going to be part of the uh, plan then. That's a shame. Mm. Well, I suppose the easiest way for us to get back that way is to use the inn again. Indeed so. Ha, <laughs> good one. He 
he kind of winks at you. Uh, and then starts leading the way back down the hill. And everyone says you are a grouch. You seem more than happy. He, he ignores you. Ah, did we find the key to your heart back there? Minus one. <laughs> Y'all can take psychic damage for that. That's okay. <laughs> you have been given negative inspiration. I'll take my inspiration back. <laughs> After that fucking cookie. Hey, hey, it gave me a whole plus one. <laughs> Alright, so, um, as you start making your way back down, follow me, Hill, to make your way back to the end, we are going to take a break. Hey. Glass of water. Whatever it is that you want to do. And we'll oh, meet you right. back here in a few. I'm writing Jonathan's obituary. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm letting Rixie know what happened so she doesn't miss the important parts. <laughs> okay. I I, <laughs> I I did tell her that uh for the entirety of this session she's just going to stay in the the end. So, uh, yeah. It's like everyone just fill her in on random stuff and things without any sense of context. She has no context yeah. over. Yep, we lost Jonathan, and Unicorn Cookie was indeed Harley Bay. Would he die from the cookie? No, no, total, too totally. Unrelated incidents. <laughs> Just unrelated <laughs> events that have happened. For now. Oh my god, I love that idea. Until the they're characters. not. Hey, Jonathan will train hard to become a mounted cookie rider. <laughs> oh my god. Cavalier Jonathan. Cavalier. I'll be back in a sec. Yeah, I'm, I'll be back. Okay. I'm going to get something old to drink.
I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome. I too, I'm here. I think we're just waiting on Doc now. Uh, I'm still far, far away. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, yo. Oh, hi, doggy. <laughs> All right, uh, with that, we uh, will be continuing on with our adventure. Yay. 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 All right, so as you guys make your way to the feet of the hell, um, You'll notice that the uh, <clears throat> the path in front of you has again changed, and oh, no. and even visit Jonathan's corpse. The hill has not moved. Onwards to adventure. beyond is it just the path that's changed or the actual terrain around uh the terrain as well the battlefield is no longer in front of you jonathan well then we see any landmarks to head back the way that we came? Um, no. But as as uh, you all kind of stood around scratching your heads and looking around to see uh, to see what, what has happened here, uh, Howard uh, is holding out his amulet and he's kind of following the way that it's pointing. Oh. Seems our guide is proving his purpose. Hopefully without any portals this time. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. Come on, he ends this way. Lovely, let's go! Alright, uh... You guys, you guys follow Howard as, uh, as he leads the way and, uh... As, as he's leading the way, uh... You guys notice that you are coming up to another thicket of trees with some more intense fog uh, running through them. Uh, Howard doesn't seem perturbed at all. He just continues walking, walking through it as if it isn't a bother when he suddenly comes to a stop in, uh, in a clearing. Can I ask all of you for a perception check, please? Yeah, perception. Eyes. Wow. <laughs> Those eyes be big. It's still, uh, they're still recovering. Damn. So glad I have that six bonus. His rolls be shit, yo. Uh, it's plus one. Your arc does not like changing landscape. It is disorienting and very unlikely. 20. Alright. So, Fowl and Cranios, you guys see a, a small stone well uh, 
a few feet in front of you. Um, and behind that, you see what looks like a a, a really rugged-looking muddy bank. However, uh, Ruark, Mayuja, and Belgesen, you all see that the same thing, except that that muddy mound, you guys can see that it is in fact a giant toad that is fast asleep. Not Nick seeing toad. the toad or anything, Karenios just goes, Is this one of the wells we were told about before? You were told about wells? I mean, oh, good question, Mark well. Pings. The reason this entire realm is a swamp right now is because of a series of wells that frequently flood it. Also, we were oh. told. <clears throat> Has anyone got a giant plug? Afraid I'm fresh out. Mew just like taps himself as though he's searching his pockets. This is why you always save your supplies. We were told that there were these wells, some of them were guarded by creatures, and that was it pixies or fairies, I can't remember which, were uh, not particularly fond of these creatures. Egypt points at the big toad and tilts his head, not realizing that not everyone knows that it's a big toad. Oh, that's a good point. We should go up the hill. Maybe we can see the creature up there. Pa will start like going towards the hill. Egypt grabs onto your arm as though to stop you. Oh, do you want to link arms again? At Pa's loudness. The toad wakes up. And, you your deadpans. And it kind of shakes itself, and and turns towards what was making the noise. I would like all of you to please roll for initiative. This heel has legs, true. Record scratch looks at camera. <laughs> Jazz music stops. What is- I have rolled three fifteens in today. Or three fifteen totals today. Dirty fifteens. One of oh, them was a 15 ex well. exact fifteen. I have no token to click on. Oh yeah. I actually... Do you have that that I just keep forgetting oh. to use it? Oh. oh, hold on. Wait, did- Where did is Battlefield? I got like a- yeah, it goes. It, it does send it. It just doesn't put it onto the uh, okay uh, initiative tracker. Yeah, because it's it's giving me a you didn't select the token. Yeah, it likes to whinge. <clears throat> okay. But yeah, Rourke does not like the swamp. It is wet and sticky and vexing, and it gets everywhere. Anakin moment. Well, I mean, if you think about it from a bird's perspective, Swamp's fucking gross. <laughs> that shit <anyways>. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, he's, Ruark is, is kind of perturbed because he'd like to take wing, but the fact that the landscape keeps changing and it's super foggy... Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to lose the party. Yeah. And also, Rourke is giving this fucking mud toad a mighty heavy stink eye. <laughs> big toad. It's a big toad. It is indeed. A big toad. 
smash or kill? I cast sleep. Are you serious? No. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> I'll get it low. Right. Abby starts crying I start as I crying. sleep everything in the campaign. Alright, uh, the let's sleep. see. It's a strong spell. Uh, what was your initiative, Shadow? 15. We're tied again! Mm -hmm. Best friends forever. I swear it's always me that ties initiative. Well, I mean, there are advantages to that. True. Especially if a lot of have a lot of stuff that can synergize. You say synergize, but my plan right now is to blast the big thing. Are we... How aggressive is the toad looking? I asked you to roll initiative, is that not a clue? <laughs> I mean, meta-wise, yes, but maybe he just wants a, he just wants a pet. How might just go and hug it? You don't know. Or a snack. An adorable little puppy wanders up to you in the middle of the street. Roll initiative. This is <laughs> intimidating aura. I will immediately grab the puppy and pet it and love it and smooch it forever. The appropriate response. Damn, bro, that's a fast toad. <laughs> it is a fast toad. Fuck me, I have a plus five on my initiative, and I still don't beat that. I was gonna say, I have a plus four. <laughs> Ugh. That's the beauty about having like incredibly high stats and constantly rolling low. Oh, damn. Man. Damn. Yay, we're damn average. Jack of all trades affects more things than I thought. I didn't realize it affected it affected initiative all right, too. So Yeah, initiative's derivative of dexterity. Yep. Okay. Uh All right, so. Pal, your turn. What would you like to do? Um, well. She's unsure of what to do and kind of will turn to her and like, are we fighting? Yes. And we'll move up to there. Has the axe ready, but isn't really too sure. We're like, Good Toady, don't hurl anyone. And I'm gonna hold my attack action and see what it does. And if it attacks really any of me or my friends, I'll you? attack. Is that your turn? Pardon? Yeah, that will be. I'll hold my action until it attacks me or um, an ally. Alright, in that case, he's going to try and fight you. Please ignore that it's at advantage. I don't know how to fix that. Does a 21 hit? Uh, <coughs> yeah, that just hits. 30, does a 32 <laughs> hit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mega lol. Uh, Level 4 barbarian. Uh, just about hits. And I mean, that will then trigger my attack as well, then. Yeah, in fairness, I can raise my AC to 26. I have questions. Shadow is out here Very my... to me. <laughs> Just use AoE abilities. Hey, we got a response about Jonathan. You... It's like, I'm almost regretting take... not min-maxing my character. You take 11 uh, piercing damage and 4 poison damage. That... Uh... Oh, damn. That... I don't appreciate this frog having sharp teeth. Could you also roll a uh, dex save, please? Get dex swallowed. Save. Yeah. 
Um, Goodbye. Do I, do I see? Wait. Do I see this coming? Because my danger sense will kick in for dexterity saving throws against threats I can see. Uh. I'm assuming I can no. see the toad. Because you've already been bit, you are now grappled. Uh, it was a save against a grapple. It was. Yeah, against effects that you can see, such as traps and spells. It just says to gain this benefit, you can't be blinded, deafened, or incapacitated. Uh... In fact, it's about to them away from danger, so... Oh, I'll, I'll just link I mean, it. I, I feel like mind. you'd see the attack. Let me see. Uh, deck saving throws against effects, you, can, you, you would see the attack. It's yeah. entirely oh, Abby, up to She DM. says no. Looking yeah, yeah. at all of the things, it just seems it's all down to DM discretion. Uh, yeah. I don't like being DM. Don't make me make choices. <laughs> Here, we'll leave it to fate. One, one, it's one, it will go through. Uh, two, it. Uh, okay. Won't. I'll, I shall roll a D2. I'll just roll with what makes the most sense. It's a two. What was that, Cass? Uh, it doesn't go through. I think. <laughs> Okay, you are grappled. Fuck uh, fate. You know, Everyone you know, hates fate. Enough hand tied, know where this is going. I, 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 no, I can luck. attack against him. You do. You can still attack even though you're grappled. Yeah. It's just at disadvantage, isn't it? Ah. Uh, uh, no, that's restrained. Grappled oh, is just okay. my movement speed to zero. Okay, well. Uh, Not that it mattered. <laughs> <laughs> Sad you, face. You do not hit the toad. You miss. You get distracted by the fact that you have been bitten and grappled, and you miss. Am I grappled by its tongue? Is that yeah, what happened? We'll go with that. I'm looking we'll at the camera, waiting that. for Abby's response. We'll go with that. Let's go with that. I'm staring ew, at ew, the ew, camera. Ew, 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 ew. Let's, let's, let's not assume the toad's gender now. Okay, Karenius <laughs> and Veldrasen, you can take your turn together. Would you like to uh, describe your action first, or shall I blast sure, it? Sure, I'll, I'll go in. Um, I am going to activate my blade song. And I'm going to move in behind the toad here. And slash at it with my rapier. Alright, roll to hit. Uh, 17. That hits. Wait, it, 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 are we doing flanking rolls? Yes. Okay, I'll just check if it would be a crit. Nope. Alright. Um, yeah, so that's a hit. Uh, that is 9 damage. Nine damage? Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, uh, is that the end of what you want to do? Shadow? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, Cranios. Yep. Let me just double check. Okay, range attack. Range. Okay, uh, seeing this toad or frog, I think of what little I know about toads and frogs, and I assume that they uh, aren't big fans of cold weather. That's the absolute best intelligence I have on this subject. So I... Uh, light up the arcane focus on my ring, start chanting a spell, and conjure three three glowing hot beams of fire, but then mutter under my breath as I expend a sorcery point to transmute the spell, and you see the fire, this three sources of fire, turn icy cold, and I shall, instead of start casting the Scorching Ray, I suppose I shall cast Freezing, freezing Ray. With all three targets going at the toad. Uh, do you have to roll to hit for them? Yes, I do, for okay. each. That is a ranged spell attack, so for me that is 1d20 plus 6. 
And I do it for each individual ray. Okay. That is a 24 to hit. That hits. A 26 to hit. That's a crit, but does that matter on a ranged spell attack? I think it does. It does. Yeah. Right. That's a natural 20. And a 13. They all hit. They all hit. I get to do some fun damage. For bullying a fucking crit. frog, dude. I'm just blasting it with three freezing beams. Okay, for damage, that is 2d6 cold damage per ray. So the first ray is... 2d6, which is 8 points of cold damage. Uh-huh. Double the dice for the second one. Double the dice, not double the result? Okay. Yep. So that will be 4d6. That is... Oh my god. 19 points of cold damage. I hope no one else Froggy. wants to be done. I was Froggy. not expecting it to be this effective. I was not expecting the crit on my second level spell. And the third ray, 7 damage. Uh, Karadios, how do you want to do this? So Karadios pulls out the frozen particle beam cannon. <laughs> Apparently <laughs> not Karadios pulls out gun. Uh... I definitely wasn't expecting it to be that effective. I was just expecting to slow it down. Fucking explode. You can handle... Honestly, you can handle what happens however you want. <laughs> Whatever happens, Karanios is just going to stand there looking surprised at how well that went. <laughs> yeah. Alright. And when that so... does work, use more gun. really well on those damage dice on the crit. The... The first spell hits, and it doesn't seem to take notice. As it didn't do that much damage. The second shot catches it in the eyeball, and you see like frost build up on the eyeball itself around the socket, and it slowly spreads down the face. The last shot hits, smacks into where the frost has coalesced on this this toad's head, and um, takes out a huge chunk of it. The, uh, the tongue that, uh, was holding, uh, Pal, um, gets, like, cut in half as, as, uh, the last spell hits, and she's just left with this tongue wrapped around her waist still, and, uh, Karanios is over there looking a little confused. sort of look at the ring with the arcane focus and wonder if it's somehow broken and overcharged or something. Goodbye, Pancake. Goodbye, Pancake. Pancake's like, yeah, my work here's done. <laughs> Mirage is making a big D colon face. Oh, Pop, no! Just looking at the remains of the frog, I think. I thought frogs Before might be not like the cold, but I definitely wasn't expecting that. That was certainly effective. I'll like suddenly remember, Paul suddenly remember that the tongues around her, like after watching this display of powerful magic, and she'd be like, oh god, gross, 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 ew, and shakes it off. Um. As, as you shake it off and it falls to the ground with a with a splat um, the uh, two two beings emerge from uh, inside the well itself uh, two little will-o'-wisps so a couple of uh, blue fuzzy lights is kind of what they look like uh, come out from the from the well and they zip over to Karanios and uh, they kind of just they bob up and down kind of excitedly just oh god not these things again in a state of surprise and confusion Karanios just thinks just goes up hello they uh they make little happy movements you have made new friends. Careful, they might Plus try one. and steal your skin. What? We use your D Collins again. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, 
a uh, a uh, what? Is Pal ignoring Goldison's question? Oh, sorry, I didn't actually hear that. Can you repeat they that? They did sorry? what? They, oh, they, they'll do what? <sighs> These little guys are known for getting people lost. I'd be very careful around them. Slightly more reasonable than dealing people's skin. Okay. Uh, Perennios, as, as they're conversing, uh, one of them uh, bobs down to... Uh, I'm going to say it's your outstretched hand, because you are still kind of just stood there mm -hmm. a little bit in shock. Yeah, just sort um, of looking at the ring on my finger. Yeah. And um Oh. Uh what language are they speaking? They Sorry? What language are they speaking? They're not speaking. Oh, I thought that you said they were talking. Okay, never mind, I misheard no. something. My bad. Uh they uh they kind of nudge your hand to to make an open palm. I just tilt the uh, hand over so it is open. And and they both come together in the palm of your hand and a small, and I mean small, it's not a flashbang, you guys. A small flash of light um, poofs in your hand and as they zip away from the palm of your hand, um, you notice that they've left you a little ring. <clears throat> Sorry. I just you uh... Thank you. They bob up and down again, and uh, and at this point, you all notice that more of these little orbs of light have appeared, and they're cleaning up the outside of the well. Huge and minor illusions, a piece of paper, and on it it says, that was a cute proposal. <laughs> <laughs> that actually does help break Coronius' stupor a bit, and... <laughs> that is the first time I have ever cast that spell. Make sure it's not the last. Huge gives a thumbs up uh, in approval. Okay, so uh, uh, I'll, I'll type this up for you later, but mm -hmm. Karanius, what they have just given you is a ring of chance. A ring so, of chance? Yeah. Um, what, what it does is, um, yes. is that uh, once you've attuned to it, you get, um, you can use an extra 1D <coughs> Excuse me, my throat is really dry today. You can use an extra 1d8 per day um, on any roll, uh, save, or check, um, barring death saves. I glare. So sort of my like bardic kind of inspiration. <laughs> it is kind of bardic inspiration, but 1d8 instead of 1d6. But it's once yeah. per day. <laughs> And you can Wait, oh, also, lucky. and you can also elect to give that one d eight to someone else, even though you're wearing the ring. Huge oh. makes mad bark noises. I uh, slip the ring onto the finger on my opposite hand to sort of mirror the arcane focus I use. Mm -hmm. I shall have to uh, <laughs> investigate this ring a little later. That was, uh, very surprising. But effective. Speaking of effective, where's Howard? Uh, Howard's kind of just looking at the toad, and looking back at Coronios, and he's kind of just 
Yeah, I'm not gonna piss that one off. Muja pats the toad. <laughs> Hopefully not on the head. Or where the head used to be. <laughs> yeah. You can't move your token? Oh, I'm sorry. No. I can never move my token. I don't know why that is. Because it didn't have permission set, and because you're not updating the default token, it will respawn with the old settings. That's stupid, because I do actually set it, but whatever. If you you set it for this token, not for his default one, so you have to go into his page and set the default token to be with the new updated settings. So just to check roll twenty the, uh, ring, is it on just checks or any roll apart from death saves? It's it's any it roll, attack, uh, and save. Hold on. Yeah, ability check, attack, or saving throw. But not for death. So, like most d twenty rolls, basically. Yeah. I have made a little note for myself for that. Yeah, I'll I'll type it up later. Um. Yeah. How it how it's just. You're not the only one who's surprised about how that went. Must have been some sort of fluke. Yeah. Uh, it happens occasionally, sure, for sure. Uh, right, shall we... Shall we wrap up here and uh, continue heading for the... For the end? Yeah, I just want to do something about like knocking down this well. I mm. wouldn't do that if Maybe I were you. Maybe not to mess with that. Aww. I cast shatter on the well. <laughs> no, I don't. Boy, I was about to yeet you out of existence. <laughs> no, please. All right, so you all. Managed to get back to the inn without any, uh, without any incident. Is there anything that you would, uh, like to do? Along the way back. Along the way back, or when you get back to the inn. Yurok would probably clean himself. The swamp is gross. No, oh, I'm bad. Yeah, there there is a uh, like a uh, makeshift uh, sinks in each of your rooms. Oh. Like some small bird baths. Rourke is unimpressed. <laughs> 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 How specific can our rooms get, or is it just sort of generally to our like race and stuff? Uh it's it's just general. Um, okay. For for the bad folk, it had to do something special because it hasn't much dealt with bad folk. Is it like a one big open one, or is it like we each have our own separate one? Uh, you each have your own separate one. Okay. When we walk in, I uh, smile again at uh, Sue and say, "Seems you made it back in time, and you are right." Right, we are heading back in the direction from which we came again. Ah, welcome back, dearies. Welcome back. Uh, your your friend, she's uh, she's terribly ill. I don't know what happened to her. Maybe the food from the Feywilds doesn't agree with her. Yes, I the Feywilds. Wonder. The logic is very huge of side eyes and then goes up to a corner and starts playing his flute. Um, yeah. uh, the the inn won't be won't be moving for a little while. Uh, she checks the the clock behind her desk, so she she turns around to look at the clock. Uh, 
uh, about 32 minutes. We, sh we should be moving. Uh, we were ahead. close. Whoa. Sorry? I, I just said we were close. Uh, you weren't that close. <laughs> So, um, if we had hung around with Jonathan and for a little longer, we might not have made it back. I should I should have spent another half hour crying over Jonathan's corpse. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she she goes back to doing her paperwork, um, and she she says that uh, she'll prepare a meal in the evening for for all of you. Um, Howard, you actually get to see Howard kind of disappear down some steps into what you presume would be the basement of the building. Wait. Ominous. Basement? You can see it's uh -huh, a new what? bench. You can, you can see, see it's a new yeah, bench. You, you can you see the front doors there. There's a basement and the legs are attached to the basement. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an in-ground basement that's above ground and being used. Feet. That just makes me beg the question. Do the feet have to dig a hole for the basement to sit in? Why do you think there's so many feet? Uh, rapid vibration digging. Oh, the bottom. oh that's what we're... Okay. Uh, oh, they all the just, just rapidly stomp in succession and just kind of tamp the dirt down until it settles in. I mean, yeah. it had... It has windows on it, and I wasn't really thinking of it as a basement, but... It's a magical basement. I mean, I guess the it, it, the tavern knows that it gets up and walks around, so why not have a window? Yeah, I mean, as long as you bat in the hatches, everything should be fine. Tom will, like, pet the walls and be like, you're a good in. Uh, Ryuch is going to write a minor illusion note uh, and uh, place it down on the table uh, and look around at the inn. Uh, and it's... It, it's a question that just asks, what's your favorite place to go? And he's looking around at the inn expectantly. Nothing happens. He cries. Instead of immediately disappearing up to my room, Karenius is just going to uh, find one of the chairs in the corner and just sort of fiddle around with the ring and try and figure it out and... You say it requires attunement. Yeah. I shall spend half an hour attempting to attune to it. All right. So you spend half an hour attuning to it. Um, it is uh, wise to note at this point, it's around 1, one thirty in the afternoon. Hmm. Oh, we made A bit early happen. to be going to sleep. Enough time to make this is still the uh, most reliable way to get. And the moment I hear the talk of uh, more cookies, I just uh, Karenius just uh, goes quiet and immediately starts focusing back on the ring again. Hmm. Uh, Sue hears the mention of cookies and locks the door to the kitchen. Yes. Uh, Miyuja is going to pick up the note that uh, asked where your favorite place to go is, uh, and accepting that the tavern's not going to respond to his question, walks over to Sue and gives her the same uh, note. Oh, what what does the note say again? Uh, it just asks, "Where is your favorite place to go?" Do you mean... He nods. He nods. Oh. Anywhere. Hmm. That's... That's a hard question, my dear. Stairs unblinking, as always. Oh, um... They, they used to be a... A lovely... Uh... A lovely little beach back on the material plane where, where I'm from. I would love to go in there in my youth.
Uh, he's going to tap the paper and it, sh it goes blank and then words form again and it asks, do you miss it? I... I do. There, there are days where I, where I indeed miss material plane and its whole, that beach. not really worth dwelling on though, is it? It's not going to get me anywhere. Can you not get back? Oh, uh, no. No, since, uh, since the hag took over, I haven't been able to travel between planes. You just oh. silent for a moment before nodding and taps the paper and it just says thank you uh, before he takes it back and it dissipates. Uh, you're, you're welcome, my dear. And uh, she she goes back to her paperwork. Um, Palm will spend like the afternoon trying to like chat with Sue and will like bring up her Palm's like hometown of like it being like basically like a beach slash ocean in the Feywilds and just sort of like talk to her about it and just generally chill with Sue okay yeah you you're just going that. to me are just gonna go back to his corner and minor illusions a bigger piece of paper than he usually conjures up and seems to just start writing in it On an illusional piece of paper? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's fully aware it's an illusion. Okay. Uh, is there anything else uh, anyone wants to do? I can't do much at the moment if I'm focused on the ring, so... Going right back to the shelf and grabbing books out. I'm gonna need that book thing again, aren't I? No, no, I'm, I've, I've got the one I was reading before. Or crafting. <laughs> okay. Yuja is going to tap his kin in the thought for a moment. Uh, then stands up and goes over to Vildresen and Minor Illusions, a, another small piece of paper, and holds it out to him. What does it say? Uh, it will uh, ask the question, uh, what is your favorite book? I don't think I can answer that. So many good uh, ones read, and yet so many better ones I'm sure still to read. He nods thoughtfully at that one. And he'll tap the paper and it'll go blank and then it'll change to ask, but what if you don't get to read your favorite one? And that will be incredibly unfortunate. He nods and tap the paper again and it'll say thank you and he'll walk back to his corner and it'll dissipate and it'll go back to writing on a larger piece of paper that he conjures with minor illusion. To the existential dread we go! Yay. Oh no, not that time. I think, are we, 
able to like go to the evening or are we is there are we just sort of doing like this short rest time period? Uh no, you're you're gonna get a long rest in the in the end. Okay. So I think like coming towards like evening, like probably before dinner's ready, like when Sue leaves to go cook it and um very much locked the door behind her so a certain someone couldn't get to the kitchen. Um Paul will camera. go and <laughs> and find uh, Ruak. 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 Hey, how you been doing? Hmm. Uh, I've been managing. Seemed List. a bit uh, distressed after everything that happened. Mm. I do not like being confined. This loft is manageable. Fair enough. Anything I can do to help? Not at the moment. Well, it seems like we're uh, on the right track to help that <laughs> all up, buddy. Yeah. You seem like good people. Really? I feel it would do us good to aid in their matters. Yeah, these hags don't seem like nice people. Or at least this hag. From what I've learned, hags are usually unpleasant creatures. That sounds about right. We used to have stories about them when I was growing up, about how the hag would come and get you if I didn't eat my vegetables. I was told that they are usually very odious creatures with a severe lack of respect. Oh. For the natural order of things. That does explain making swamps in the Feywilds. Hmm. Maybe I'm sure they, more swamps. I'm sure the Fey are most displeased with this turn of events. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can go and kick her butt and dispel whatever's going on around here. Indeed. It is the honorable thing to do. I guess. She's just mean. That too. I think Sue's done with dinner again. Hmm. Well, her cooking is... He cocks his head trying to think of the right word. <laughs> like... Better than my cooking. Indeed. I'll learn one like day. All, yeah, like all things, patience, time, and practice. Although, some may require more than others. Yeah, I, well, as you mentioned, practice makes perfect. Indeed. All this time, he's just Chris. basically just kind of like, just very intently staring out the window, just kind of like, in, in the zone. So a lot of these awkward silences are kind of sort of, I don't want to say intended, but that's just what it's like conversing. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll just... And be leaning against I, I guess like one of like the wooden pillars like because i imagine you you're like perched up somewhere while i'm talking to you from like the lower level yeah he's, he's probably like propped up on like a windowsill just kind of looking out and some and sometimes you know like it's just given given the nature of his physiology it's it's a little tricky for him to speak common so sometimes like his responses feel I don't want to say rehearsed, but, you know, like basically some, it's like someone who's memorized a basic translation guide, but has kind of learned to kind of adapt it a little bit. So it doesn't quite sound. Like it almost sounds a bit too formal in many ways. Like you're not using yeah. like the abbreviations that common people would use that speak the yeah. language. Yeah. Which is why every so often, like he'll, he'll kind of like pause for a moment and just kind of mentally 
formulate, you know, because like he, he's kind of, like I said, I mean, he, he's pretty good at speaking common. It's just there are certain words that are difficult for him to say, so he has to kind of mentally figure out an adequate word that he can speak without fussing it up. <laughs> Oh, you're but, good people too, Rook. Hmm. I would like to think so. Let's get some food. Let's get some food. Let's get some food. I, like he's, chant all his, the way downstairs. Head, like his entire body is is motionless, but his head just kind of like slowly rotates on its neck, like you know the way birds do, but just watching her leave the room. And he just kind of gives like a slight shrug, hops off the windowsill, and just kind of follows. <laughs> all right, so you guys all go down to the dining room uh, where Sue is just finishing placing plates. Is uh, is there anything anyone wants to do? Well, Can we tell what? Jump at the chance. I, 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 I've jumped up a lot, so I'm, I just don't want to take the spotlight every time. No, Rourke will politely bow to uh, Sue and take his seat. Sue gives you a, a nod back. Hans already got like knife and fork in hand, it's just like jiggly and excitingly, like just unable to stay Bar still. Barbarian using utensils. What's great is that she is an obligate herbivore as well. Mm -hmm. Because she's a rabbit. <laughs> Angriest Wait. rabbit in the West. Ready to angrily attack the leaves. That that was part of the, the, the joke I made earlier about hags not coming after, coming after you if you don't eat your vegetables, because it's all we eat. Mm -hmm. It's all we have. Trying to use some Veldrasen? Yeah. yeah. Are you, uh, I assume you're sitting at the table as well? Yes. Yeah. Alright. And with that, the session no. is over. No! Yeah! Was there something you wanted to do? Nothing immediate. I just don't like it when it has to end. Same. Yeah, that... That was, uh, that was today's session. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'm sorry that I absolutely eviscerated the toad. <laughs> Honestly, if you didn't and Abby said it's looking really beat up, I would have cast sleep again. <laughs> My toad! My cabbages! You fool I love that we went from these random brigand bunnies will incapacitate you in a turn to this random toad will get completely obliterated in a turn. Actually, to, Pops. Just being, being blasted fair. by those bunnies stressed me out, clearly. To be perfectly fair, there was a lot of bunnies. <laughs> I was reading the book and I was like, this seems like a lot of bunnies, but oh well, we'll see how it plays out. <laughs> and then you guys got knocked out. <laughs> got absolutely slapped. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of the <laughs> campaign from way way back when. And I'm trying to think, because our group got separated. Or no, one group took off to cash in on a quest while the others were being all, you know, lawful goody good and, do, you know, doing some PR work. But the, the more neutral neutral slash lawful evil guys wanted to cash out and we ended up getting into a random encounter and all i remember hearing was that the the assistant gm leaning over to the main gm being uh do you think these guys can handle a pack of thrycreen and there was a, there was a beat he's like yeah they could probably handle it no 
Insert the, <laughs> in, insert, insert the Morgan Freeman meme. No, they could not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. Yeah, we got thrashed so hard. I was like, no, no, dude, Thrive Crane are fucking nasty. <laughs> we can't. That's when the shit. DM starts fluffing numbers behind the scenes. Oh, he didn't have to fluff the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> basically then it was it was the it was the the gms trying to figure out how to get the goody good party to catch up to the absolutely laid out and you know x amount of points from permadeath party to save their asses in time <laughs> that was and probably this is why we have cookie unicorns <laughs> and jonathan's um, I uh, don't make me cry. <laughs> I um, yeah. I just want to say that I wanted today to be a, a slightly shorter session because Rixie isn't here. Um, I don't know. It's completely forever. understandable. So yeah. So hopefully next week she'll be able to join us. Um, longer we'll session. A, we'll have a longer session if everyone's cool with yeah. it. Um. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed yeah, cool. it. And uh, yes. you three especially, I hope you're getting more into your characters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, a thousand percent. I made percent. cookies. Jonathan. Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you realize that you... to do is to come back and you... rescue Jonathan. Yeah, I, so you so made an enemy of me today by telling me not find like Jonathan that. again. He's not dead. It's like, He's asleep. I, I was, I was like, Rurik was totally gonna try to help out and save Pal from the tongue of icky grossness, but yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> nah. I did. Uh -huh, think... Anyways, Toad got put in microwaves. Huh. I didn't think. Yeah, Toad go burr. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to hit with all three and crit with one of them. That was that was insane. If you hadn't of crit, that that toad wouldn't have died as easily or as quickly as it did. Not only did I crit on the crit roll, I rolled so high on damage. I could have only gotten five more damage on that crit. I'm just sad that I didn't get to sleep another one of Abby's encounters. <laughs> my my finely I'm... crafted encounters that I spend hours agonizing over because I don't know if it's good or not. <laughs> I just want to point out, outside of the crit, I rolled almost perfect average on the two, the damage dice. I got high and low. But the crit, all of it was high. Wow. All right, next time I'm gonna I'm gonna try and bank on that and uh, uh -huh. make it stronger. <laughs> oh, make it like ten, five times stronger at least. Give, give us a challenge. <laughs> Cass, teach me how to make Make us cast. suffer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What um, you do is you overscale it, and if they start struggling, you descale it. Oh, is that how it works? I feel yeah, like I hit by a sometimes. You can sometimes do that. I feel like if you want it to be a difficult fight, but not unbeatable or unfair, you can scale it as the fight goes. Okay. Unless you unless you do what I do, and the uh, players have a way to actually see the stats and what's going on, and in which case, uh, you better start rescaling uh, fast before you, they actually see what they can what happens. Oh, okay. Cast just revealed a little <laughs> magic from behind the scenes of our campaign. That's wonderful. <laughs> All right. I say that, but it's actually just stuff that I've learned that other DMs do. I. I'm very strict about my stat yeah. scaling, and uh, it can easily end up uh, fucking over campaigns. It, I won't say where it has, but it has. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so if, we end up if you do that behind, if you take care of it behind the scenes, rebalance it. It's not something people will tend to notice if they're just having a good time with the play, with playing the. Oh actual. yeah. And I, I hope I'm giving you guys a good time playing. I'm having oh, an amazing yeah, time. Yeah, you're, you're always giving us a good time. I, 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 I'm only slightly offended that I didn't uh, respond to Miyuja's question. But the end? The end yeah. of an anima, just because it has legs doesn't mean it can... It has a, I want it has to, a... to respond, legs. though. Baby and homunculi. No, what you should have done is wait for it to start walking and get it to, like, carve out a path so that it, like, stamps out feet. Oh, yeah, because that's going to be noticeable. 
Well, we have two flyers. They can just yeah. get a bird's eye view. Yep. Be great. All right, I'm gonna we end the stream. So if everyone wants to say goodbye to chat. Bye chat. Bye, Bye stream. Chat. Bye chat. Bye chart. <laughs>